Chylothorax. Introduction. It is a plural collection of a milky lymphatic fluid containing microglobules of lipid. A simple way to say it is lymphatic fluid from the thoracic duct or chyle accumulates in the pleural cavity. The total volume of fluid may not be large. Thoracic duct anatomy and physiology. The thoracic duct carries chyle, which contains triglycerides in the form of chylomicrons, T lymphocytes, electrolytes, proteins, immunoglobulins, and fat soluble vitamins from the intestine to the bloodstream. It commences at the cisterna chyle, at the second lumbar vertebra, and ends at the junction of the left subclavian and jugular veins. As the thoracic duct passes through the mediastinum, it also receives non chylous lymph from tributaries that drain regions of the pulmonary parenchyma and parietal pleura. The sum of these sources accounts for a total lymphatic flow through the thoracic duct of 1,500 to 2,400 ml per day. This flow increases with dietary intake of fat particularly long-chain triglycerides. Etiology Lymphoma is the most common cause, accounts for approximately 11-37% to of chylothoraces, with non-Hodgkin lymphoma more likely than Hodgkin's lymphoma to cause a chylothorax. Malignant etiologies account for more than 50% of chylothorax diagnoses, trauma, including iatrogenic, Congenital lymphatic anomalies. Clinical features. The majority of patients with chylothorax present with dyspnea induced by the mechanical effects of a pleural effusion. Additional symptoms include a heavy feeling in the chest, fatigue, and weight loss. Fever and chest pain are rare because chyle within the pleural space does not evoke an inflammatory response and rarely becomes infected due to the bacteriostatic effect of immunoglobulins that are contained in chyle. Chest pain is rare in this condition because of the anti-inflammatory properties of the proteins in the chylus content which prevent the pleuretic inflammatory response. Complications Chylothorax is significant because it implies obstruction of the major lymph ducts usually by an intrathoracic cancer Example, a primary or secondary mediastinal neoplasm, such as a lymphoma. It can be either lymphomatous or non-lymphomatous. Diagnosis Most authors agree that a clinically confident diagnosis of chylothorax can be made by demonstrating pleural fluid triglyceride concentration of more than 110 mg per deciliter, or 1.24 millimoles per liter. In the correct clinical context, that is, patient who has an exudative effusion with a predominance of lymphocytes, more than 70% of the total nucleated cell count, on a regular or high-fat diet with a known risk factor. Conversely, a pleural fluid triglyceride level of less than 50 mg per deciliter strongly excludes the diagnosis in the correct clinical context. Example, no supporting biochemical features of or risk factors for a chylothorax. When in doubt, the diagnosis should be achieved by the detection of chylomicrons on pleural fluid lipoprotein electrophoresis, for example, those with a pleural fluid triglyceride level between 50 mg per deciliter and 110 mg per deciliter. Management General Principles no management algorithm has been universally adopted for patients with chylothorax since multiple clinical factors unique to each patient impact therapy including etiology, symptoms, local expertise, and a rate of chyle accumulation. There are no large randomized trials comparing therapies, therefore our approach is based upon clinical experience and data that are mostly derived from the case series of patients with post-operative chyle leak. Low-output chylothorax. 
Patients are considered to have low output chylothorax if the estimated or known volume of drainage or accumulation is less than 1 liter chyle per day. Many patients with medical reasons for their chylothorax and post-operative patients with chyle leaks due to minor trauma to the thoracic duct, for example, trauma of a small thoracic duct tributary, fall into this category. In general, these patients benefit from a staged care plan that moves from least invasive options to more invasive interventions. This includes drainage for symptom control, dietary control measures, and treatment of the underlying condition. Adjuncts, or somatostatin or ocreotide, are often also administered as a way to avoid surgery in this population. As a general rule of thumb, the larger the leak, the more likely a patient will fail such conservative therapies, increasing the need for a definitive intervention. Should these measures fail, then chemical or surgical pleurodesis, thoracic duct embolization or disruption, thoracic duct ligation, or some combination thereof is considered. High Output Chylothorax High output chylothoraces, estimated or known volume, more than 1 liter of chyle per day, are most commonly seen in post-surgical patients, especially esophagectomy, and those with liver cirrhosis. In such patients, thoracic duct ligation or embolization are typically needed early, often within the first few days after diagnosis, since conservative strategies are more likely to fail in this population.